Well, Merry Christmas. As we get into the season, I get really excited about the cookies and I start pulling out some of my favorites, some of the classics, because that's really what Christmas is. It's pulling on the memories and traditions. These are my Grandma Conrad's chocolate waffle cookies. Now it sounds kind of different to think, wait, do you mean a waffle cookie? I mean, you make a batter and you make little cookies in a waffle iron. It's that simple. And really these come from that time where you used what you had on hand, simple ingredients. Maybe you had lots of kids around and just wanted something great to have. And they kind of became a holiday cookie, something more for special occasions. And that's what these are. But honestly, these are all things you're gonna have in your pantry and they're really easy to put together. So to start, we're gonna have some eggs and we're just gonna crack them into a bowl. Now, the thing is with eggs, just, you know, you don't have to always buy the best egg. Brown egg, white egg, they're both eggs. But if you can find more of an organic egg, it's gonna have a darker yellow yolk. It's gonna have a richer flavor, but you know what? Use the eggs you have on hand. That's the most important part. So we have our eggs in here. I just wanna break them up to get them started. It's always to me easier to beat eggs into a batter, into whatever you need it, if you can have them slightly broken up. It's just, you know, they're gonna be easier to mix together. So once they're kind of broken up, I'm gonna go with the sugar. This is Christmas, you gotta have the sugar on hand. And the difference is here, these are not at all a traditional waffle. So don't think these are waffles because they're not. Instead, they're a much kind of more of a dense, more of a cookie-like dough. So that's what the big difference is here. They're not exactly what you're gonna th think and expect to find. So I'm gonna mix the sugar into that and you can see how it instantly changes those eggs. It has a much thicker consistency. We're gonna add some flavoring, which is gonna come in the form of vanilla. So you have all those great kind of items going on here. The vanilla, what's important about it is it's really gonna bring out that chocolate flavor that we're gonna add. So I'm gonna mix that in. What I did also was I had butter that I melted on the stove and then I let it slowly cool off because you don't wanna add hot butter to eggs. So I'm gonna start drizzling that in and we just had it melted because that's how it really mixes in better. This isn't a traditional cookie where we're making a batter where you're gonna cream sugar with all the other components. Instead, we're gonna mix it all together when it's melted and have kind of more of a liquidy consistency. So as we're mixing that, we're gonna add in flour, the dry ingredients, which that's what I'm saying. You can see all these ingredients, the waffle maker's heated up, and that's exactly what you want. I like to have my waffle maker going beforehand because what that does is ensure that it's gonna be hot when you want it. Kind of like an oven, it's important to preheat it. So I'm gonna add in my flour, just a couple cups here, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Like some cookies at Christmas, you know, take a lot of extra work, a lot of extra time. These don't. We're gonna also add in some good cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is really that, this is the component here that's making these chocolate. So to me at Christmas, it's all about those richer flavors, those extra good items. So that's what this cocoa is gonna do here. So we're gonna slowly start whisking this in. As you can see, I'm just using a hand whisk on all this. You could use an electric mixer. I don't really see the necessity because it's kind of a wet batter. So you don't need it, something else to do the work for you. So I'm gonna finish mixing this in and we're gonna get going making cookies. Now you can see how thick and how the consistency really changes as everything really hydrates. That's what you want, this nice, thick, rich dough. And guess what? I don't know if you ever noticed, I often forget the salt and guess what I forgot? I forgot the salt. And when it bakes good, I want the salt. It really does balance out the flavors. So I'm gonna mix that in. And now we're just ready to make cookies. That's kind of the fun part now. This is a really different one, but what I love is, this is a great one to do with kids. My mom remembers gram her mom, my grandma, making them growing up, especially on those like cold winter days. Just one of those fun things to do. So I have my waffle iron heated. I'm gonna take a little bit of butter just to ensure that we're not gonna get sticking, but it also just adds a little bit of flavor, and that's what you want. You want that flavor kind of all the way around. So I'm gonna add that in there, and then you can choose how big a cookies or small cookies you want. On these, I like them to be slightly on the smaller side because they kind of spread out once they're in that waffle iron. So we're gonna put our batter right in the middle, and this is gonna make separate cookies, and that's what's important here. So obviously, different size waffle irons are gonna be different. You may have to adjust, but we're gonna have different sized ones. We're gonna close it up, let them go, make some cookies, then we'll top them too. It's Christmas, you have to have all those components, the toppings, the everything, it's gonna be good. Last batch is coming out. Now you kind of have to kind of work with your waffle iron to know. Mine is on setting two and it takes a minute, 20 seconds per batch for to me the perfect, I want them crispy on the edges but still kind of soft in the center. So then I take them out and I let them cool. 
And then we have a little, we have a little facility going over here of I feel like a candy maker and that's what I love. So what I am now doing is taking these cooled cookies and you can see it makes a decent amount because we're making small cookies and you could do anything with these. You could make little sandwich cookies. You can make little ice cream sandwiches. Can you imagine some peppermint ice cream in between those? Anything you want or what I do is I just melt chocolate right here in a double boiler. So I've had hot water on the bottom, heat it up over and then put a double boiler right in it and put my chocolate. I do it with like a little bit of coconut oil just to kind of soften the chocolate and help it be a nice smooth, shiny consistency. And then once the cookies are done, I just take the tops and I hold it, I dip it. And then what comes out is this beautiful, look at that. And now what you can do is you can do whatever you want. You can do in a sugar. I love the green sugar. I love the clear kind of white sugar too. So it looks more like a snow. You can do kind of anything you want. And that's the best part. And that's what I love is you can really make these how you want. Now in between, I do like to make sure I wipe off my fingers because you get the chocolate on them. You get the sugar and you don't want to add all that sugar and everything back into there. But you can kind of just have fun. Now, if you want to, you could pipe chocolate all over them and just drizzle it. You could really just inundate them with chocolate. It's Guys, it is choose your own chocolate fantasy here <laughs> and you can just enjoy it. And that's the fun part. This is where I really see getting kids involved, having them have fun. It's kind of like decorating cookies, but in a little bit different way. Look at that. You just get that shiny coating on it. And then you can just keep going and having all these delicious, beautiful cookies. On some of them, I just sprinkled dragees. I had the white pearl ones or the gold ones. You can do whatever you want. I remember grandma said she would always just do a, just a thin chocolate layer, maybe a frosting and be done, but it's really fun to dress them up. And she too said she would usually add the colored sugar because it's Christmas and that's what it is. I love when you can bring elements of family, bring them together, kind of do these things together. And can you imagine giving these as gifts? To me, they are such a pretty gift because look at that. You get that crystally look on top and you can really, you know, have fun with it. Now, one thing I always talk about and I get tons of questions about is, I always say I make these ahead and I freeze them. When do you freeze them? How do you freeze them? So once I have them done, I have chocolate on them. I then like to put them in airtight containers, wax paper, parchment paper in between, and put them in a deep freeze. I have a big deep freeze. I live in the Midwest, you have a deep freeze. If nothing else, what's nice this time of year, sometimes your back porch, an unheated area, becomes a deep freeze because it's so cold. But I will keep them frozen for a few weeks and then pull them out and put them on cookie platters, take them to events, whatever it is. Now the big question is, how do they taste? This one isn't completely cooled with the chocolate, but. Mm. Oh, mm. these are better than I remember. What I love, you can kind of see the consistency in the middle. You get just like that nice kind of crust on the cookie, but then the soft interior that almost melts in your mouth. And honestly, the chocolate with the cocoa, and then the chocolate in the melted chocolate, you get this intense chocolatiness, and it's just kind of that like, hit of that Christmas cheer that you want. You get those great flavors, you get those great textures, and it's the perfect cookie size. That's what's fun about these. Waffle iron cookies. Not just any waffle iron cookies, Grandma Connor's waffle iron cookies, and that's the best kind. So what do I want you to do with this video? As always, it means the world to me, seeing you guys share these around to your pages, to your stories, whatever it is. Cause yeah, it helps me a lot, but you know what else excites me? It helps everyone else see how easy and fun these things can be. Gather some friends around, some kids around, whoever you want your family to be, make some baked goods together, some cookies and share them. As always, the whole recipe is on my website, wiseguide.com, along with all of my other recipes. Until next time, have some Christmas cheer, make some cookies and eat a few too.